All right. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Another night. Another night with Local 49 of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. That is Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated dot org. Local 49. I am Ross Lazarus tuning in with you to bring you the word on reparations and the hidden trust fund. You know, I've heard many brothers who have done UCC speak about that we have a trust account. And many brothers and sisters have used the Federal Reserve numbers with the numbers on the back of their Social Security card trying to access the trust fund. Well, tonight, live and direct, I'm going to tell you some history about the trust fund. I'm going to give you some history about your first reception of reparations that you did not know you were given. Again, This is Local 49 for the Ethiopian World Federation. I am Ross Lazarus leading the discussion. I hope you tune in. I hope you tag a friend or so forth or whatever um, and just join us. Um, I'm going to show you some information. We're going to do a discussion on some information and I hope it gives you a view to see that there is so much more to your life. So much more that was going on with the history of your story, of our story. And so from that component, let us begin. All right, my brothers and sisters, I'm gonna pull up something first because I want you to be aware of someone and I want to introduce you to who was called Theodore a Theodorus the Casa um of the Ethiopian Empire. Um, I thought it was going to have his picture up here. Uh, let me see if something else comes up related to him. Okay. I had a brethren that we did some time with, Ras Casa. Um, he took on the attribute. Let me see if I can pull up a different one. I was hoping to pull up his picture. Um, here we go. All right. So this is Emperor Theodore. Um, Emperor Theodore comes before the time of his Imperial Majesty, Ali Selassie. And there is some history that has been missing out of your history books and again this is another um, wake you up to the false cry of no one came for us no one um, from Africa cared or what happened to us they didn't try to do nothing for us these are propagandas and lies taught to you by your enslaver to create the disconnection, to create the painful feeling of abandonment so that you would create the emotional genetical coil to sever yourself from it so you wouldn't have to feel it. But it was all just lies. Africa has been coming from you for a long time and you did not know it. Ethiopia in, 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 in all rights has been trying and trying to pursue and secure your position in the world and you did not know it 
And this is just another chapter of how Ethiopia has reached forth its hands unto I and I and tried to help I and I in these trods and in these times. So what did Theodorus do? And what is the story of Theodorus? Well, it's a lot of stories, but let's let's you know here they say locks of the Ethiopian emperor's hair are returning home from London. They cut his hair. Um, but what happened? What happened to Theodorus? What was the history of Theodorus and what is missing from the history? So we're going to read a little bit from the Wikipedia um, and then we'll come back into it. Theodorus II baptized Gabriel Kadem was emperor of Ethiopia from 1855 until his death in 1868. He ruled, his rule is often placed as be, the beginning of modern Ethiopia and brought an end to the decentralized Zemin Masafet or the era of princes. Prince. Theodorus II's origins were in the era of prince, but his ambitions were not those of the regional nobility. He sought to reestablish cohesive Ethiopian state and to reform its administration and church. He sought to restore the Solomonic hegemony, and he considered himself the elect of God. Theodorus II's first task after having reunited other provinces was to bring Shua under his control. During the era of Prince, Shua was even more than most provinces an independent entity. Its rulers even styling himself Negus or Negis, the title for king. In course of subduing the Shoans or the Shuans, Theodorus took with him a Shuan prince, Menelik II, who he brought up as his own son, who he would later who would later become emperor or Atase himself. Um, as despite his success against Shua, Theodorus faced constant rebellion by stiff-necked nobles in other regions, not understanding the benefits of modernization. He ultimately, this is what they say, he ultimately committed suicide at the Battle of Magdala during the British expedition to Abyssinia. Well, in all truths, Theodorus was assassinated at the Battle of Magdala. Um, some say he did the samurai and he took the sword and he pierced himself because of their attempt to come and assassinate him or to come towards him for information. You know, they wanted knowledge of the gold and of the treasures of Ethiopia, um, certain things that they knew that the king could give. Um, but they stole a lot of treasures. A lot of treasures was taken in the Battle of Magdala. Um, these were some of the pictures. Uh, let me see if they'll show them. Mother Mary and the black baby Jesus. Um, a lot of uh, pictures of the black saints and scepters and crowns that were taken in this time. But there's more to this story. What enticed this uh, attack? What, what enticed these moves against Ethiopia? What, what, what brought on this looting by England in this area? What were some of the things that uh, created this well let's go a little deeper so that we can talk some history now I'm going to read something here for you why was Emperor Theodore of Ethiopia assassinated for those who knew as the subject of reparations is rising again let us follow the money Theodorus II, 1818, April 16 to 1868, was the emperor from 1855 until his death in 1868. Where is $4 billion in gold bullion that the Ethiopian emperor Theodorus sent President Abraham Lincoln as reparations? In 1865, Emperor Theodorus II of Ethiopia, upon hearing the Emancipation Proclamation of Abraham Lincoln, 
had prepared $4 billion in gold bullion for his fellow Ethiopians stolen into slavery and for fellow Africans sold into slavery as a form of reparations to be distributed to free slaves for the purpose of establishing economic security for themselves, for the acquisition of land and farming utensils and tools. Emperor Theodorus informed President Abraham Lincoln of his plan and he agreed to it. On April 14, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. However, in 1867, this gold was entrusted into the hands of the federal government of the United States for distribution. Thaddeus Stevens, remember this name. The congressman from Pennsylvania came up with the idea that they should keep the gold and give the slaves 40 acres and a mule. So Ethiopia was responsible for your 40 acres and a mule? So the federal government of the United States confiscated four billion dollars in gold bullions from Ethiopia. Then on January 18, 1868, General Sherman was issued field order number 15. This is your 40 acres in a mule. Which set aside the amount of 485,000 acres encompassing all of the sea islands from the Charleston, South Carolina to Port Royal, Georgia were designated for the exclusive use of newly freed slaves. Wall Street, after hearing of this field order, was outraged and said such a plan would be a serious mistake, upsetting the economic balance of the country by making the servants equal with the masters. Having the economic mainstream entering into the issue, the field order number 15 was denied and the $4 billion in gold bullion was never distributed to the free slaves. Later that year, Emperor Theodore II of Ethiopia was assassinated and your reparations movement began. So what happened? Well, let's, 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 let's get some verification. Thaddeus Stevens. Look at Thaddeus Stevens. White guy. Look almost like Abraham Lincoln. So it might be something up into that mix. Um, he was a radical Republican congressional leader during Reconstruction. He battled for freedmen's rights, insisted on stern requirements for the readmission of southern states into the Union after the Civil War. Admitted to the Maryland Bar, he moved to Pennsylvania to practice law in 1816. An anti-Masonical member of the state legislature, he proved himself a friend of banks, internal improvement, public schools, and a foe of Freemasons, Jacksonians, Democrats, and slaveholders. So he was a foe to these Jacksonian Democrats and slaveholders. Serving as Whig in the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives, he advocated tariffs increase and opposed fugitive slave provisions of the Compromise of 1850. All right. So now when we think about when we go to Theodore's time, when Theodore sent the money, the gold. Let's track this. Let's look at this. I think we can find this. Maybe this is this the one or is this the same one? That's not the one. It might be in there, but I'm going to try to find something a little bit more simple. Uh, uh, maybe this is it. Is this? No. All right.
All right, Thaddeus Stevens offered an amendment to the Freedmen's Bureau Bill to authorize the distribution of public land and the confiscated Confederate lands to the freedmen and loyal refugees in 40-acre lots. It's important to note that all of this land had been stolen from Native nations, Stevens said. We have lands there to the extent of more than 100 million acres and more than 100 million dollars in value. Yet notwithstanding this, the freedmen's have been and are being driven from lands which have been ordered to be confiscated as enemy property or which are covered now with the freedmen's and villages and schools and churches which they have built. Why Sir General Frist to, to told me that within the last four weeks he had compelled reluctantly to return $22 million worth of property in the district which had been confiscated and was in the possession of the United States government. All right, let me, I was trying to find where he actually goes into his statement of why to give up the land. Uh, let me go back one more. Maybe this is it. Well, he actually has a statement, and I'm trying to find it because I hate to just say it, where he's telling them that the distribution of the land um, would allow them to pay the war debts and pay the pension of the slaves. I mean, the pension of the um, soldiers who had fought in the Civil War. Now, you have to think about this in the correct manner. If slaves are just being freed, per se, if those who have been colonized are being freed and they've been working as slaves, they don't have no funds. So how could giving them the 40 acres in the mule um, pay off the war debt and pay off the war pensions? Um... Uh, try to see where if he might have said it in here so it's like you have to track that that position that he took that's really important that's why I really want to show that um, I don't know why I can't remember which one it is So he was always speaking of it, but I wanted you to track this money. And that's the key of understanding it, um, that he believed that giving the 40 acres and a mule to the freedmen's um, would have uh, helped them pay the war debt. Um, oh, here's something right here. Let's see if this is a good one. Thaddeus Stevens of Pennsylvania proposed that all planters' lands and former Confederacy be confiscated and redistributed to ex-slaves and poor whites in 40-acre tracts. Stevens argues that with money from the sale of the remaining confiscated lands that the government could pay off war debts and finance pensions for Union soldiers and their families. Now you have to wonder like how are they going to be able to pay the war debt um, through this process? What, where would this process be? So you have to understand Thaddeus Stevens, the congressman from Pennsylvania, came up with the idea that they should keep the gold and give the slaves 40 acres and a mule so that the federal government of the United States was able to confiscate the $4 billion in gold. But later on, what happened with the land? So if the land 
was called and it was set up under what was called the Freedmen's Bureau of Acts. It was supposed to be Freedmen's land. But that land was later on confiscated and taken back. So the four billion in gold still was not returned to those who it had been offered to for their reparations. So then you start wondering like why? Because this government was quick to set up a whole Freedmen's Bureau and was connected to the Department of Treasury the departments of war and the, the treasury department argued that the freedmen's and the land should be handled by one of authority they were dealing with your four billion dollars in gold they were dealing with your four billion dollars your reparations that was set by an ethiopian emperor an ethiopian emperor an ethiopian emperor sent you four billion dollars in gold bullions for your reparations africa a ethiopian king an ethiopian emperor well let's look at some other means and ways too on this just so you get another idea of some things new york times 1909 king menelik has invested here the new york times archive shows that the newspaper published the following report in 1909 though the accuracy of some of the claims for example languages are doubtful we have reposted it here for what it may be worth this is what they're doing now because it's amazing to the way they have taught us the history Menelik said Baron D. Jollisberg in an interview with New York Times correspondent has since his accession to the throne 20 years ago transformed Abyssinia from a semi-barbarous power to a state modeled on the lines of European constitutional monarchy. Hmm. Or <laughs> is it the other way around? The sovereign who styles himself somewhat Promptly conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, elect of the Savior, king of kings of Ethiopia, who shattered Italy's colonial ambitions by his victorious at the Abba, um, the Abba Alga Mekle Degra, or the Battle of Adowa, is ruler of the nation of seven million inhabitants, the mysterious origins of which is lost in the night of ages. When Menelik was crowned emperor of Ethiopia on November the 4th, 1889, after King Johannes' death, he was far from being accepted ruler of all states, which constituted the Abyssinian Empire. Empire. It was only after much hard fighting that Menelik finally succeeded in subjugating those rebellious chieftains who did not recognize him as Johannes' legitimate um, successor. Remember this now, because he's Menelik. But you got to remember where Menelik came from. Theodore. Since Menelik's one aim has been to introduce European civilization in it, into his country, the emperor, after abolishing feudal laws um, still extent in the empire, emancipating the slaves and establishing compulsory free education throughout his dominion, so Menelik set up free education, abolished slavery. Let's look at something else. I'm going to go a little further. Oh, where is it at? Today, the Abyssinian's ruler has extended the range of his financial operations to the United States and is a heavy investor in American railroads. What with his American securities and his French and Belgian mining investments, Menelik has a private fortune estimate fit no less than $25 million. This is in 1909. 
um, which right now would be equivalent of eight hundred and ninety million dollars, almost a trillion if it was, you know, dealing on interest and growth. So. Menelik had a large investment in the American railroads. Um, you know, they don't teach us the history of African kings operating in this capacity. Um, you know, we were being enslaved and subjugated. And so some rulers would have felt reluctant in putting their money and their finances with them, thinking that all they would do was rob them. So in a sense, that's what happened with the four billion dollars instead of it being given as reparations to us it was robbed became part of the treasury became part of a trust fund somebody became the fiduciary and we became classified as minorities minors so that they could rule over our reparations which was given to us by an Ethiopian emperor so there are a lot of things in motion and a lot of things that have took place um, since then. And we have to come to understand those things, you know. So the relationship and what goes on with Ethiopia and the world, I want you to pay attention to it because it means a lot more than what you may be taking on the fat on just the flat line level there's a lot more to it so just a word for the day is that your reparations were paid by an Ethiopian emperor and after this Ethiopian emperor even Menelik was a power figure in the investments in America some of these funds have been set up still part of certain things that as we unite in our heritage with those of the lineages of Ethiopia, there are potentials of us accessing our trusts, our funds. Yes, there is. And so just in speaking in generalized terms, um, stay aware, become active, join and come learn more and more about the reparations the benefits and those privileges that are given to you those things that have been hidden from you and now the Ethiopian World Federation reveals unto you who truly paid your reparations and how do you claim your reparations well let's begin by joining the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Go to Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated.org. Join. Find a local near you. Join. Let the nation rally together. We, the black peoples of the world, wherever we may be, let us rally together. Let us claim our rights. Let us claim those reparations in the right capacity. They are there for you. They're just things that you don't understand, may not have been aware of, why you have been being denied. So just in understanding that, and again, seeing the locals, there are a multitude of locals. Find a local near you, join. Go in here, just click on it, join one, join one near you. And now become aware of the things that's going on. Because I know that you did not know that an Ethiopian emperor had paid reparations for you. And that was how they set up your 40 acres in a mule. That's where the concept of your 40 acres in a mule came from. Because they were trying to steal your reparations and take your gold and give you the stolen land. Yes, give you the stolen land. They wanted the gold. And in the end, they took the land and the gold. So when you talk about your reparations, here is the first line. Follow the money. Here is the first line. Why was Abraham Lincoln assassinated? 
Huh? Why was Abraham Lincoln assassinated? So, Thaddeus Stevens tells you. He tells you. He came up with the plan. That they could get take the gold as payment and give us the 40 acres in a mule. In the end, they assassinated Abraham Lincoln and they took the gold and took the land back. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Stolen funds, you know, because people like to talk about in Africa, those leaders do this and those leaders do that. Well, let's talk about what happens over here and what was the history over here the corruption you know so you think you're voting every year but you're signing rights for somebody to operate as a fiduciary over you that's what your voting rights are about that's what you you fight to get your voting rights restored and all of you sign up for it it is to allow them to classify you as a minority, as a minor, so that they can keep operating as a fiduciary over your estate. This is how they were able to run and balance their country. Stolen wealth. All right. Let me see one more little topic. I'm going to touch one thing. And as we said, what makes this important, you know, What makes this important? Why is this so important? You know, we've talked before about His Imperial Majesty coming here in 1954, checking on how we were, what was our affairs, what was our rights in here, and the treaty was signed, and the allegations of them treating us, but Malcolm had to sound the trumpet that it wasn't like that. But I'm going to another very important component. Um, where his imperial majesty um, be on the wrong one because I didn't go there. Hold on. Oh yeah, I was on the wrong one. And so my point was again when we talk about nationality You know, we have to recognize the need of incoming repatriates to become citizens of Ethiopia. His Imperial Majesty issued and consolidated the laws of Ethiopia that become part of 1931 Constitution under the Section 9 Nationality. The following provisions priding for citizenship for black peoples of the West. If the Imperial Ethiopian government deems any foreigner who applies for Ethiopian citizenship to be of value or if it finds other special reasons which convinces that the applicant should be granted citizenship and may grant him or her Ethiopian citizenship even if she, he or slash she does not fulfill residency and language requirements prescribed in Article 12 B and D of the Nationality Law of 1930. So his imperial majesty placed in provision so that we could gain our nationality. That you could register for your nationality. 
you know so ethiopia has been providing provisions of reparations and the ability for us to set ourselves up back as people of the world of nations as free and independent people for a very long time and this history has been hidden from you so you have not been made aware but you will find out that they had made a plot to pay off their war debt and finance the pension of the Union soldiers. And in that process, they stole four billion, four billion gold bullions from you. And in the end, they had set up the Freedmen Bureau as though they were consolidating you in some form. And then in the end, they shut it back down. And they closed it up. Everyone took their pay and they split it up. So when you talk about reparations, you're going to have to tie yourself back to Ethiopia and start processing your claim of the theft of your reparations that was given to you by the emperor of Ethiopia, Emperor Theodorus II. Blessed, just a word, just a build. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it gave you something to think about. Um, just a quick little one in and out. Um, do your research. Find out. Lost history of the hidden treasures. Yes. Where does your trust count really come from? When they made you property. Uh, a fictitious entity. You know. What were they doing? How were they bonding you? What were they backing you off of? Some of us say our life force. Yes, it was our life force, but it was also the value of us as we had our value placed on us by the Emperor Theodorus. So give thanks. Bless. One love.